Hello, this is a quick project update on the 330i. First of all, I have the cluster out of the dash, and that's so I could actually test a little prototype on basically spoofing the gauge cluster so that we can get selectable coolant temp or oil temp at the temperature uh, gauge location. So that's going well. On top of that, I have the intake manifold off. So that's on the floor down here. And that's in preparation for an M50 manifold swap. So I'm working on that right now. And I'm not gonna show too much of the detail behind it, but what I will show are some of the solutions I'm coming up with to how you might wanna do this yourself. And obviously I'm just kinda copying a lot of other people. So first of all, these are the socket head set screws I got from Lowe's. They're three eighths by 24 uh, threads per inch. And it looks like they'll thread right in. So, let's see it right here. Here's one out of the package. And it wants to bite by itself. So I know I've read, I think it seems legit garage has a kit for this. And with what they supply, they say you can just, they'll self tap right into the block. I wasn't going to do that. I actually bought the tap kit so I could do it correctly. But with how easily it seems like they'll probably go in, this might actually be a great uh, path to take and just avoid the tapping altogether. Down inside the hole, it necks down, and that's your idle control valve passageway for idle air. I'm afraid to put anything down there to try and block it off from debris, because I'm afraid I won't be able to get it back out. These studs come right out, I just put two nuts on them, tighten one nut up against the other, and then back the entire stud out super easy, so you just have to remove this one right here, and the one right back there, so the pattern matches the M50. And then I'm going to be installing a larger throttle body on this particular vehicle. I wound up using the tap. I applied some grease to the end to try and catch any chips. So hopefully this isn't, isn't too bad. I originally did try to self tap it and it kind of ran out of steam and I was afraid of breaking the bit, the Allen key. I was putting it in. The grease method seems to be working pretty well, just like how I tapped the spark plug holes in the other E46. This should give you an idea of how much thread sealing I'm applying. And honestly, that's too much. Once you tap the threads, which is definitely the way I'd recommend doing this after trying the one without it, you can see this threads in by hand quite easily until it hits the bottom right around there. And then you can put the ratchet on. And you run it in until you can actually feel the bottom out, which is right there. And that's pretty much all there is to it. And then you can wipe the excess off and it'll clean up, look like the other two. So you can see that's below the height of the head, so we're good to go. This is the fuel rail from the M54, and on mine, this fuel line is stuck. On this side, I can't get it off, so I removed it from underneath the car. Anyway, to mount this on an M50 intake, these tabs here all need to be removed, so I've taped off the fuel injector cups to keep any debris out, and I'm just gonna zip them off with the angle grinder. This is with the tabs removed, and I'll show how this fits in a second. It started raining outside, however, I'm making good progress. The intake is pretty much on. I don't have it bolted down to the head, so it's loose. However, I got the fuel rail on, and this is kind of a pain. So first of all, you need these adapter brackets. Uh, these are temporary, and they're actually uh, rod bearings from a LS engine that I flattened out and drilled holes through but it seems to work for right now. I hooked the fuel rail back up and gave the car power and cycled the key a few times. 
and I haven't seen any leaks, so everything seems to be dry, which is awesome. I have 750 cc a minute, I believe, injectors in here. At the moment they're aftermarket injectors. And the bigger problem is the factory harness, the way that it's made, the clips on it want to clip on backwards. So they need to go on this way. But if you try to use the factory box, they want to go on this way and they will not go on because on the factory engine, the electrical connector box appears to be back here, which obviously there's no way you can do that on the M50 intake. You have to reverse the direction of the injectors so they're sticking out towards the cylinder head. You can see it over here. I haven't changed the orientation of the injectors on the factory intake. You can see how they face back in away from the head. So it's the opposite. It's all very tight. And originally what I tried to do was take these um, injectors and they're square. So I tried to flip it inside the box, but there's actually so little wiring on, well, this is not an injector, but there's so little wiring on the injector. If you try to flip it at the end, it will not go back into the, to the location it came from. So there's no way to actually do that. I was watching Bayside uh, Fabrications video on the manifold swap. And he seems to think that this will fit inside of the factory box. So I might check that out. It's not something critical right now. And look at that. So I started to smell fuel just as we're talking and it is leaking probably from me touching it. If I push on this, it does leak. So I'm gonna have to figure that out. I need to plug the ICV hole in the back of the M50 manifold. So I made this little adapter here. It's just 3D printed for right now. But it should work to get the car fired up. And all this does is clip in under the intake. So it's pretty easy to install. You can see it goes underneath. And there's so much room under here without all the stuff installed that you can literally just come in, pop it in right in the back here. Make sure it goes all the way in. There it goes. Nice tight fit. And it won't pop back out. All right, so we're gonna try this real quick. It's a mess, but I did just write the CCU. It's supposed to have the EWS turned off. We'll see if it works. It's the first time I've done it this way. I programmed it for the large injectors, although I don't have good data for these, so it might run like crap. In fact, it almost certainly will. I updated the intake air temperature sensor um, calibration, and I had to move the wire from up here in the center of the MAF down to below it. I plugged the wrong cable in last time, so I'm not sure what, what that actually was. And we're going to go ahead and see if this will actually start. Everything seems to be sealing. It does try to run. After a lot of fighting with this, and I even flashed the factory ECU, I went to the EU4 tune and I also did not code out or patch out the checksum uh, checks inside the ECU, which I read online, could cause a crank no start situation like I was having. And I was having a code for basically a checksum error. So I went to the EU4 tune, nothing else has changed. And let's see how this works. keys. I also plugged the cluster back in because PA soft was complaining about it. All right. There we go. Fires right up. And the water pump makes weird noises on this car, but that's actually really good. And I don't have good data on these injectors. So I'm happy with that. I'm replacing the intake gaskets for the throttle body and also replacing this 3d printed piece so this is pla and it's not rated for oil contamination or temperature so that's what i made then what i did is i ordered this one which is sls 
and I think it's PA-12. So this one is a much, much stronger piece and it will hold up to the temperatures and chemicals that are found in the engine bay. That said, this one's been in here for, for quite a while actually, well over a month. And I've driven the car a little bit, just maybe 10 miles. And you can see it's actually perfectly fine. I'm quite surprised. And the other thing I did do is I installed this Rally Road fuel rail, which is all nice. And it's uh, got AN fittings on the end going back down to the factory uh, fuel outlet underneath the uh, fender down there. Let's see how this goes. This car usually starts rough even before the intake manifold swap. I think the banner seals are probably going bad. So right now it's actually not bad at all. This is the smoothest it has run. Let's see if it starts to bounce or not. But I do think it had a vacuum leak before, which is why I was doing this. When I checked, I had a vacuum leak right here. So it sounds like we probably just fixed that. Sorry for the annoying beeping. I have been start, uh, driving this car. So we can see here the mileage will be accurate once it goes past the inspection. 135.9 miles on it. Once again. It's starting better than it normally does because it's on video, of course. Okay, there's a hint of the roughness. The squeaking, when it does that, it's the water pump on this. It's old and very cheap. So, I did put a air filter on it. See, it's got a cone air filter. The squeaking actually goes away, too, as it warms up. Uh, I'll get to that later, but I have another project planned for the cooling system on this car. So I'll just take it around the block real quick, show you how it runs. Okay, right now I'm just driving around the block. I have the camera sitting on the dash. Second gear. that down come to a stop sign here it's got some weird low power issues like right around here 1500 2000 rpms it doesn't like to go but it drives you can also hear some weird noises i think that's from the geometry of the throttle body but i'm not positive so we'll take it around and I'll try to get into it, hopefully the camera doesn't slide off. All right, wide open throttle here. 